What's up guys, today we got a really cool video. Notice we're not around the shop, we're somewhere where it's warm, so you guys check this one. As you see, we're here at the Vim headquarters. This is where all the magic happens, right? Welcome to our yeah, crib. Yeah, it is. Welcome, Welcome to the crib. Welcome to the crib. <laughs> hey, uh, so I'm, I'm here in Tampa, hanging out, and I called Louie and Mike, and we're gonna hang out today and have a little fun, play a little bit of golf, yeah, which sure. is always a good thing, but I know you guys wanna see some new tools, so I just happen to know the right place to come, because they usually have something cooking here all the time. Yeah, he could have me on the phone. He said, y'all got any new products? I said, Clay, <laughs> come on. You've come to the right place. Come on. <laughs> so let's see them. Yep. Let's, let's get on go. So this is the war room, I assume, because lots and lots of tools. This is where the magic happens. This is it, huh? <laughs> Yeah, so, no, we uh we put this place together to do pretty much exactly this, display new products and even have, you know, certain flagship trucks here so they can give their presentations here and we can show them some of what we got with our big projector here. And it's worked out. Yeah. And uh it's a pretty good demo spot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everything good. you see on the walls is, you know, something that we've either made in the past or brought in as a sample or something we've considered bringing in here. And everything you see on the table is what has made it past inspection so this is like the final step before the world gets to oh yeah put their hands on it right there's a lot of stuff that we turn down a lot of oh, things that we shit. think are everything you see in the showroom multiply it by 30 or 40. <laughs> this that's is what we really that's actually a had a lot in, in here guys there's some of it i can't rooms. show but there's, there's a couple of rooms here. here that are overflowing with boxes and tools and different things and we like to do uh, a lot of gadgets, a lot of innovative stuff. So there's stuff here that you've never seen anywhere. Um, and it's stuff that, you know, we've thought about and it just, you know, hasn't been released yet. <laughs> That's awesome. So what percentage of the stuff do you guys take a look at that makes the cut versus- 10 to 15. It's 10 to 15, that's it. Wow. Because whether it's quality, whether it's finish, whether it's looks, whether it's application, whether it's lead time, all of those factors we all, we take into consideration before we bring out a product. Because if we're, you know, spending time in inventory space outside and all of our efforts to try to make a product as best as possible, we need to make sure that the backup is there from manufacturing all the way through to selling. Sure. That makes sense. Because if the truck has trouble selling it because of one of those things, right. why the hell are we going to make it? Well, you got a lot of stuff laid out here. Oh, so. we do. We got it laid out to show you. And we did not set any of this up. This is how it's always at. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's usually, this is cleaned up. There's usually a lot more than this on these tables. Yeah. All right. So. We're kind of going to go back and forth and just okay. show you a little bit what we got here. So on this side, we're going to start with our brand new two ratcheting wrench sets. Okay. You have the DFXL 100, which is an extra long. You have the same size on both. So you have a fixed and a deep box end flex end. I know the reason why you did that. And America knows the reason why you did that. But let's hear the <laughs> real reason why that's So the why. reason for it. <laughs> Is and I'm sure you mechanics didn't know this before, so that's oh, yeah. that's why you broke so many of them sure. you didn't know. That's but right. I'm gonna teach you. Now you know. Ratcheting for running, mm -hmm. fixed for breaking loose. Okay. Right? That that'd be the that'd be the hope. Dude, it's that's got a lifetime warranty. Well, it does, it does. It, but right? you know what? Why do you care, right? Being without a tool for however many days or weeks it takes for your dealer to get you the replacement right. might cost you more than the time it took you to flip it over. That's yeah, right. That is, but that's, that's true. so for all of you guys that were looking for like the mountain style wrenches that your dealer can't get or whatever, here's a great alternative. There you go. And there's your part number. That's what they look like. So yes, sir. Yeah, and that's the, the answer. They, these are great quality. When we were releasing these, because they're so long, obviously it's a risky item for any tool company to come sure. out with because this is something that you know may cause a lot of warranties. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of testing with this. Uh, these are great wrenches. Yep. So if we put our name on something, you can rest assured it's so good I quality. I wanna show something real quick because everybody talks about the mountain wrenches, right? Okay. Look how they did the reverse lever 
on these. And also with the flex heads, how they got the detents in them. So. With indexing, not just free flex. Right. Yeah. So. And another thing is that one thing about our products is that ANSI standard is the standard of hardness and durability for hand tools in this country. Mm -hmm. Every product we make, the goal and the, the, the threshold that we try to meet and that we meet every time before we bring it out is 200% of ANSI standard. That's so what you're saying that this wrench is supposed to break at 80, yours will do 160. That's not exactly how the percentage works out, yeah. but it's, yeah. yeah, it's a round double. Okay. Yeah, so the, the ANSI standard is 100 and that's what's standard. It's probably not 80 just because the ANSI standard is normally lower. It's just what's acceptable. Right. We do double that. Yeah, okay. professional tool companies, they strive for 100. And then 120 to 150 is where normal tool companies stand. We make it a point to get to 200. And our defective rate on across our entire hard line is less than 2%. Okay. We true. rarely see really warranties good. on our hard line. And that's, most tool companies, it's hard to reach 3%. That's and, true. You know, we're just under two. Most tool companies, actually most tool manufacturers, a lot of people don't know this, but with warehouses and distributors, they have a clause in their, their, their agreements or contracts saying you have X amount for warranty percentage. So instead of warranty things out, I just give you this amount because I know it's gonna be, it's plus or minus whatever, right. three, four, even 5% sometimes, they just give them back in credits at the end of the year so that they don't have to deal with warranties. We don't offer that because it's so low that it would, we would be losing money if we offered that discount. So we Sweet. say, you know what, we'll take back the warranty because it's under 2%. There yeah. you go. And that's honestly because, and we'll get into this in a second, uh, that's honestly because we're tool enthusiasts here. The owner of this company, he's been doing this for a very long Over time. Over 40 years. And, uh, you know, we love tools. We love quality tools. So Vim represents that. So let's look at the short versions of these. That's the DDF 100. You see it's got the dual side that's offset. Both sides, same locking mechanism. Same indexing on each side. Yep. So. And the foams on a lot of our sets, they're getting smaller. A lot of the stuff that we're doing is more toolbox friendly. Um, whenever we bring in a set, a sample, we usually like to show that off first. And a lot of people will say, I mean, foam on that is way too big. Yep. So like they're, they're, getting, they're getting better. Okay. And uh, this represents the size of the set a lot more accurately than some sure. of the samples you may have seen previously. So, the old set, which he's getting now, you can see the difference. So this was a sample of the original design of it, but then we shrink down the foam to listen to our customers to make it easier on you guys. So half the size of it. We really do listen. And if you guys follow us on YouTube at Vim Tools and watch our Tool Tuesday videos, um, if you comment or if you have any questions, We'll answer that in the video. If you have concerns about something, we really do listen. And this we is, implement this changes is that are mentioned on that sure. video. We use that as a tool to help product development. Also, Instagram and TikTok. Instagram and TikTok, exactly. Their thing, right? Yeah, that's it. That's you guys are everywhere. Oh, we're we're all over yeah. the socials. As my dad calls them, the medias. That's yeah. it. <laughs> you do the media. Go get the media. Goes, go go do the medias. <laughs> yeah, but that's honestly something that Vim is pretty good at. That a lot of these other companies that aren't flagships don't do as much. True. Um, a, lot of, because, a lot of manufacturers are just so big and they're not family owned. We are family owned. We try to mm -hmm. keep it everything in house and we are still relatively small by numbers of a company. We only have 23 employees. Yeah. So when it comes to making changes, there's not three, four, five layers of red tape to have to cut through. And it's, it helps that you guys aren't 70. That also that helps. Young. <laughs> this, you know, we know how to get to the comics to read them. The oldest <laughs> person aside from the owner. The <laughs> older person up here in charge of marketing and, and product, product development, development and all that stuff is 32. 30, 33. 33. There you go. So we're young. Bunch of young books. Vim mm -hmm. stands for energy enthusiasm. That's what we have. And you know, that's what we bring with everything that we do. I've actually been told I talk too much. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we got. Not a new set. Michael, go ahead and tell them about that. Not a new set. SAR 100. Okay, this is SAR 100. These are ratcheting combination wrenches. Mm -hmm. And they have this cool exoskeleton design, yep. which make them lightweight. Um, they also actually add a little grip spot yeah, for you to put cool. your thumb. That's, <laughs> that's the biggest part, they look <laughs> badass. Cool. Uh, and they have like a slight 15 degree offset. Yep. And it comes in this amazing shadow foam, which is the green and black, which looks good, presents that's well. Great. You sit that in your drawer and uh, it 
I know you guys did this so you could see the color where you know yeah, it's a exactly. tool missing. We're not missing no wrenches. But you, you should have done it with the 10, not the 11, just saying. So it, it looks working. normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, you're right. So it got up and ran away, huh? So here's, a, here's another this thing. A big one. Here's another thing. This is an example of something we just recently changed. This is the Impact 50. These are all stubby impacts. Mm -hmm. All right, these are all S2 steel, one piece drivers. And we used to have this in a much larger blow molded case. Right. This is the updated set. It's a lot more toolbox friendly. Um, so you can see the whole set fits in here just as many pieces are there. That's so how big the box is. So for you guys that don't know what he's talking about, the one piece design. All right, let me get one of these triple squares. You can see it's all the sockets made together versus the socket that has the bit pressed in. So that's these, what he's referring to. This type of stuff right here is what made them popular. The half cut. Bits and drivers. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Bits, drivers, all of our S2 stuff. Um, pretty much everything we do is S2 steel. Anything, everything we're about to show you is S2, unless well, we say our, it is. Our whole relationship started because of a half cut Torx and the half cut yeah and, and, and like these two so this is the quarter inch version of the impact 50 mm -hmm. and these are the stubby uh right. stubby one piece drivers also in quarter inch and something that you may not know is that these are satin finished these are s2 steels the same material as these these are impact quality we don't impact rate them because they're chrome finished so obviously chrome can flake but whenever you use chrome on an impact but these can handle that abuse so you're saying if a guy sends this back and it's obvious that it's been run on an impact, because you can tell, if I can tell, I know you guys that deal with tools, warranty wise, y'all are not gonna turn down a warranty if you know it's got some impact marks. Right? No. Covered. Yeah, that's covered. And like I said, we make this out of the same material that we make our impact stuff. So we do that knowing that you guys are gonna use it on an impact. Sure. Everybody that has chrome sockets at one time or another puts it on impact. Why? Uh, it's a lifetime warranty, so make sure that warranty holds up. And we wanna make sure that our stuff's not gonna break on you. Mm -hmm. Now, just for reference, I know you talked about the size difference in the cases. Yeah. yeah. New case impact 50, old case impact 50. Oh yeah. Same set, look at the difference. You guys are shrinking toolboxes. <laughs> there we go, look at that. I know that real estate's expensive, so. Yep. And what's great about this set here, let me show you guys something. These bits right here. SP2, SP3. Very, very, very Very good popular. Sets. We get, I mean, we should, it's crazy how much individuals get ordered of these yep. two sizes. It is nuts. Well, yeah. shit's getting smaller and guys ain't, right? That you got to work in. So it's, well, you it's know, better to have the, engineers for major car manufacturers are always keeping the mechanic in line, right? That's, oh, that's what absolutely. they do. Yeah. They're like, yeah, is this easy for him to so access? They let me, let me figure let's out. let's make it easier to work on. Let me, let me make yeah. it so that they get home for dinner. That's you know, right. we've got an engineer here. So if there's anything you guys would like to say to him, just drop it. In or, you know, if you want to take a bat to him, that's... <laughs> you got him. Well, look, as... It's not very nice, man. As sorry, Hobby's a nice guy. I'm kidding. As technology improves... They cram more and more stuff inside these cars, and things are getting tighter and tighter. So low profile, tight exactly. access tools are incredibly important. Uh, and exactly. that's what we do best, really. So we got triple square. These are the long sets. Yeah. These are some of the highest quality drivers you're going to see anywhere. These are also S2 steel. And they're meant to replace a set that we had existing already. Sure. Yeah. These are S2 steel. Um, these are also impact quality. Like I said, we like to satin chrome finish things. We're very aesthetic uh, and satin chrome finishing looks looks great. You don't see a lot of that in America. That's usually sure. like a European thing. Um, but these are S2. So you can be assured that these are gonna hold up. And we actually have our own S2 logo. Mm -hmm. If you see that on any of our sockets, you know that it's a high quality piece. Right. Um, and we've been doing that for a long time. Louis, was Vim one of the first companies to start manufacturing with S2 in the tool, tool world? Um, it, was, it was one of, it wasn't like we were the pioneers of the S2 steel. It's just we were, i call us one of the masters of it. Vim, it's like everyone can, like there's there's blacksmiths everywhere, but there's master blacksmiths. That's, steel that's is right. steel, but it's how you forge it. Vim has been around for almost 100 years, and Vim actually started as a mobile tool company. Um, this guy, Ray Durson, was going around selling tools at the back of his was it 1940? It was actually, it was the guy Ray Durson bought the company from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. The guy that Ray Durson bought the company from was located in Minneapolis, and he would drive around in the back of his businessman coupe. He had a shit ton of tools, because at the time there wasn't that many different applications for tools, because it was back in the 
the 20s. So cars were, you know, 20s and 30s cars were, they were a lot simpler, put it that sure. way. Yeah. So the tools, it wouldn't take a full size tool truck to carry tools to service local mechanic mm -hmm. shops. So he'd drive around and he was selling out the back of his car, which is today the mobile dealer. Yeah. And uh, from there, he sold the business and the name to a man by the name of Ray Durston. And Ray Durston had already started his company as the carbon scraper company. And his first tool that he actually had and what he sold, he manufactured a carbon scraper, which I probably have somewhere in here, that was USA made. And he used his sailor's bonus from World War One to We still carry that carbon scraper under do. part number C1. Yep. So we still make that. That was the first So product. if you want to buy a piece of history, you can order that. There have, you go, USA made still. Yeah. yeah, so, but they started manufacturing out of Pasadena, California, mm -hmm. and they used S2 steel. Um, and so we've just kind of kept that tradition going because it has proved, it has it has stood the test of time. Sure. You know? And then he bought Vim, obviously he took it over and he used some of the designs that the guy had come up with himself to start mass manufacturing it as Durston Manufacturing, hence Ray Durston. Yeah. And uh, he also had the brand, which was Vim, which wasn't as popular because it was mostly private label at the time. Fast forward to the 50s, the Vim brand started picking up recognition, so he started manufacturing more Vim stuff in-house. Fast forward to the, you know, the early 90s, 2000s, they were still manufacturing a lot of stuff, private label, but the Vim stuff really started picking up. And then fast forward to, you know, 2018, the Vim stuff had really reached a high level, and that's when the company was purchased and moved to Tampa, Florida by my family. And, uh, and that's, that's when really the green, you started seeing the green, that's when we came in. Yeah. yeah, but we've been a part of him for longer than that. Oh, yeah. My father yeah. was the director of sales for him for eight years prior. And he was doing, uh, obviously, product development. And so a lot of the tools that you started to see, even in the 2010s, was his, his, was, was his doing and bringing all this stuff and, in. And and he's, a, he's the innovative mind behind everything. Tell everybody here. what your dad's known as. Dr. Gadget. Dr. G. Dr. Gadget. Dr. Dr. Gadget. We actually have a, an RZR outside, and this man paid to have it wrapped in his driver's side door says Dr. Gadget. I'll put a show and now in here that way you guys can see. Passenger it. side door said Dr. Gadget Jr. That's my spot. <laughs> <laughs> but so, just an idea so you guys can see what we're talking about when he said revamping some of these sets. This was the XEN 400. Mm -hmm. Great set. Great quality. So this but is the 400. Wasn't, this one's the 400. Actually. Exactly. It wasn't the prettiest set, but it worked. Right. So that's the finish of that. And as I've shown on Tool Tuesday, we went from this to this and made it a more complete set. There you go. And that's just one of the changes. We went from this packaging and this finish to this packaging and this finish. So this set is this set, but this set has shorts. So correct? this yeah. set right here is, is the, the of bottom things. of these. And this set, which is the XENS 1000A, is these guys up here. So if you just want the shorts, <laughs> this is the set you buy. If you just want the longs, this is the set you and buy. And really how it goes is people know the XCN 100 and the XCN 400. Or this if you want the, them all. This, this is the 400. The 100 was the same version, but smaller shorter. and shorter. We made them a little bit larger in terms of uh, what sizes are in them. And then we made them their own sets here, change the finish in the packaging. Mm -hmm. So this replaced the XCN 100. This replaced the XCN 400. This replaced the XCN S 1000. Okay. We have a very wide array of triple square. Uh, and then this drivers. obviously is the master set, including both of those new sets. You know, we have one piece stubbies. We have two piece regular length. We have extra long. We have six inch long. Um, do we have them on power shanks? What? I think that we do triple squares. Triple squares. Stay tuned for that. There oh. you go. <laughs> Whoops. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, you always hear it here first. Yeah, I that's mean, well, awesome, right? the thing is, is when you're in this building, there's all this stuff going around and then you forget, oh, that's not out yet. Because we are six months in the future yeah. at all times. You know, for most companies, a product that's six months old like this is still brand new. Yeah. And for us, that is like old news. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, we're like, probably, it's like the high school girlfriend. You don't almost forget about it. Right? <laughs> we're, we're probably 20, 30 products ahead of this one sure. already because we just have so many lined up. But realistically, the goal and the, the mindset behind that is every show we go to, obviously it's been a full calendar year since we've been to that show and seen those customers. Sometimes they overlap. But for the most part, you see those customers, those mobile dealers, once a year at these shows. And the first question you always get asked. What's new? What's new? What's new? And I want to make sure that we have an array of things to show him because I want that man to look at stuff and be like, damn, you did it. You yep. did it. And <laughs> and so now Vim has that reputation. Every time we go to a show, it is We love the Vim booth. It is a flock to the Vim booth and we are always I mean if you've ever been post. to a tool show and you see our booth 
Yeah. With the amount of people we have in it, we have five people in those booths normally, and every single one of us is parched and we haven't eaten. That's why I keep this set here so I can, you know, I can still go without eating for well, a few I, hours. I said y'all pizza last year at the Sema show. You did, you, you guys did. Had me. Yeah. So I snuck behind one of them toolboxes and I just gobbled down some pizza. <laughs> at one of the shows recently, there was so many, we were all so busy, and the, the booth was so packed that uh, Louis would be like on one side of the booth. He'd be like, he'd be like, Michael. Pass me the FPRW. It's crazy. Okay. It's like a it's like a certain awesome delay type people. orchestra we got going on. Yeah. Because he'll say something and I'll hear it out of this ear while I'm talking to someone. And I'll pull one of these and I'll just, you know, Stand hand it to him while there. I'm still talking to the customer. Because yeah. we've managed to develop that kind of chemistry. Do it because we've been doing this. We were 17 years old together. There you go. 10 years almost. Okay. Back to tools. <laughs> <laughs> RFW 200. You guys have probably seen this as very popular online so far in the social media world. Um, so these are ratcheting flare nut wrenches. If you haven't seen them before, a normal flare nut wrench bites on only four sides. You have the two on the bottom, two on top with an open end, right. okay? Uh, if you put too much torque on it, a lot of times it'll expand, it'll start slipping. This bites on all six flats. Mm -hmm. It locks in an open position so you can get around your line. And it has a little tab on the inside. Once you get onto that fastener, It'll actually snap shut, or you can push it shut, doesn't matter. Sure. And it actually overlaps with itself. So if it is going to expand at all, it bites on the bottom jaw and it impedes it from expanding. So you're not relying on spring tension. And it also sure. takes a lot of the pressure off this pin on the back side, which was what a lot of people pointed to and said, oh man, those are gonna break. I see that pin right there. Right. Um, but that actually takes a lot of pressure off of it. And these are very innovative in the sense that, I need a smaller size, Lee. Uh, no, no. So, once you're on here, because this jaw is spring-loaded, when you turn counterclockwise, it's ratcheting. Right. So you can get into tight spaces, and without having to finagle and take it off and try and re-engage, you can just ratchet with this back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so this is the heavy-duty set, the RFW 200. We have two smaller sets, which are the RFW 100, which goes from eight all the way up to 14 millimeters, and the RFW 150, which is 15 through 19. So you have those three sets that really take you from eight all the way up to 32 millimeters with minimal skips. Well, sure. from, from eight all the way to 19, the only skip is nine millimeter. Yeah. There you go. That's a great gun, but a terrible wrench. There you go, exactly. <laughs> it's almost useless. I prefer 10 mil myself, but then you go yeah. losing it. So this, the reason we have this out, it's not a new set, BTXL 400. You guys know the set, we've had it. We changed the finish, just like we did with the XCN 400. And then we changed the packaging. So instead of the blow motor case, you're gonna get one of these. It's really thin, one of these foams here. Even though they're thin, you're not gonna see them, you know, throw, flopping everywhere. They're not, sure, because it's dense foam. We use very dense foam. So I wanna brag on your company for a little bit, okay? Because I've said it you a bunch never. of times in videos, <laughs> but every person in the industry, whoever comes up with their part numbers, I think they take a bunch of letters on dice and, and a bunch it. of numbers, <laughs> throw it across the table, whatever rolls up is the part number. Like, your stuff makes sense, right? Guess what this is? It's a ball Torx. Guess what the beginning of that part number is? And since they're long, I'm sure that's where the XL comes in, am I right? Yeah. Like, you, you guys we'll actually that make sense with part numbers. We actually have fun with that. When we'll, we'll be sitting in the room and we'll have a new product. I'm like, okay, guys, what's the part number? And so we'll try and like come up with the acronym. Yeah. Uh, like RFW 200, Ratcheting Flare Nut Wrench Set 200 oh, cool. for the larger. You know, XEN for triple square. Right. MMS 450 for Mechanics Master Set 450. You're going to have. SAR 100 stands for. Slim, slim angle, angle wrench, ratcheting, ratcheting. Yeah, let's, there you go. Slim angle ratcheting wrenches. Yeah. So you guys are getting a history lesson and a part <laughs> number breakdown yeah. on for instance, the VM tool. W and you learn what VM stands, stands for. for exactly. A lot of people say VIM, and it's not. It's I did that for years. Here's the thing. Everyone does. It's like when people say your name a little bit incorrectly. It doesn't really bother me. This guy. It bothers him. It, it doesn't, it doesn't really. Do you, They'll stand up in a room full of people say and shame them. pliers that's made in Germany. Oh, yeah. How do you say it, man? <coughs> <coughs> say it one more time. It's. Can I really? Yeah. Okay. It's Nipex, and I'll never say it any other way. Okay. Knipex. No, won't say that. So you should never get mad if somebody calls it them. 
because they even printed shirts that gives the pronunciation. Uh, of the devil <laughs> Whatever though, hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite. All right, I got sidetracked again. Sorry. WSA one hundred again with yep. that part number wobble socket adapter. These are quarter three eighths and a half, and mm -hmm. they go into a ten millimeter, fourteen millimeter, and nineteen millimeter. And what these guys do? Do you see that they have those two ball detents? Yep. 14 millimeter wrench, ratcheting wrench, so you can turn a regular wrench, box end, or mm -hmm. a ratcheting wrench into a breaker bar or slim ratchet because that first ball detent locks it in place and then you have a super low profile ratchet or breaker bar if it's a box end. And not only that, but you see how that's got that design there. That mm -hmm. is that two-step wobble, as we like to call it. You get a 3.8 here. The rest of the world knows it as wobble plus. Wobble plus, exactly. Same concept, where you stick this in, you have now fixed, or you can pop it out, and now you have that extra degree of wobble. There you go. That is an item that for a lot of these mobile dealers is something, well, at least when we first came out with it, was something that it's kind of like a gadget item. When people say what's new, yep. that's And they love it. And the thing about them is that you're gonna see with a lot of our stuff, the price point is not that bad for what you're yeah. getting. And then for com what you're comparing it to, it's really not bad. Yeah. So I hear a lot of people say, the Vim stuff is cheap. I say no, the Vim stuff is inexpensive because it's really good tools. I yes. mean, you know, at the end of the day. Well, the, and I'm not just saying it because you guys are here. Like I've said <laughs> it a long time. You know, like it's, look, it's good tools. They're in, in this industry, and I'm, not, I'm sure a lot of people know this already. Um, the private label is a big part of this industry, and we make products for many brands. A like lot of what, brand, what brands? A, a lot of brands that you use. <laughs> a lot of brands that you probably have in your toolbox already. So this is that. This is. We bring I can't trip him at all. No, we no, bring no, no, he's trained. We bring that same quality. So to our when tools. you say other brands, are you talking about like name brand tool brands? We're talking about very high end name brand tool brands, yes. Like they have tool trucks. Flagship We're brands. talking about some of the largest brands. Flagship brands. I don't want, them to, think, that. I don't want them to think you're talking about like the icon line. No, no, I, we, don't that. we don't touch so, that. We don't touch that, no. So, no, but what I was getting at. That's the quality of these tools. So it's that same quality. Um, if not, sometimes I'd put our stuff up against theirs uh, yeah. in some instances. Um, so with a lot our of times hardware. when a guy buys something off a flagship truck. There is an alternative option. When you pull the cloak off of that, it's kind of like Scooby-Doo. You remember when they used to pull the mask off and it'd be somebody else on there? A lot of times <laughs> it may be your stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, well, and that's the thing is that, you know, we don't have that big name brand like a lot of these people do sure. so um, and with that big name brand comes a big price mm -hmm. so we don't do that obviously you know vim is a smaller company we have a more affordable product that is the same quality sure and for the people that don't have a tool truck or don't have access to tool trucks your website has Exactly. We have our website there. Granted, I recommend you go to a tool truck first. No matter what you do, the service is never going to be the same as online. And the pricing there is going to be the same, if not better, off a tool truck. So now, what he's saying with that, guys, is if you break this, your tool truck will replace it that day. No problem. It's not saying that they're going to treat you any different. If you buy it online, they're not going to warrant it. That's oh, not no, what they're of saying. Course, of course. They're saying if you break something, more than likely your tool truck's going to hand you a new one same day because exactly. that's why you pay for the tool truck exactly. service. service. You, won't, you won't get that same service anywhere else. Anywhere online. Especially the thing is our website is there for those who have no access to a tool truck sure. and for informational purposes. If you're interested in learning about our products, our website's great for that. I mean, there's a lot of guys that's sitting in the same boat as me. Like, you know, Hamilton was one of the best snap-on dealers in the world. And he went out of business. But when he went out of business, if I hadn't had other tool trucks, I'd be screwed. Exactly. Yeah. So, Well, so. we have a find a distributor portion on our website and you can use that to find anyone who carries our products um, around the and country. And that's what that is. That is for dealers to say, hey, I have him stuff on my truck. If you need something, here's my number, here's my email. Sure. Let's figure out how you can get that yeah, from if, me. If I know dealer, there's a lot of dealers that watch this channel. Exactly. So if you are a tool dealer and you carry them stuff on your truck, how do they go about putting it on there? You reach out to us or mm -hmm. uh, you go to sales of M tools. That's, that's the email that I will see. You can reach out and let me know your contact information, your name, your phone number, your email address, and the zip code that you service. And I'll make sure that everybody that goes on our website can see where you are servicing and providing Vim tools. Sure. For them or to reach out to us on Instagram, on any social media site. Reach out to us. We see all that. We respond to there it. You go. Or you can leave it in the comments because maybe you guys will read the comments. And then to make that clear, that doesn't mean that they're buying directly from us. Sure. That means that they're, they're buying from a warehouse, but they carry our product on their truck. 
and yeah. you can buy from them is what that means. Mm-hmm. Yeah, although, because I, I do have some people say so that I can, they, we can buy direct. I was like, no, that's that's not what that means. That means that we're telling the public they can sell you Vim product. Right. You they can get you Vim product in person as opposed to having to go to an online retailer. Yeah, yeah. and our social media is almost an extension of customer service. So if you is. have any questions about anything or something that parts breakdowns you want to be added to the distributor page on our website, just reach out anywhere you can find us. Something new. The Impact 50 and a lot of these other sets like this, this little guy right here, this QR code mm-hmm. is linked to a parts breakdown so that you can scan that if you're if you're a dealer or an end user. You have a warranty or any question, you want to order more of one, you scan it, it'll come up with a link, you, pop, you click on it, and there you go. The parts breakdown for that full set is going to be on your phone in seconds so that you don't have to there worry about going to look for it. But if there's a set that's ordered that doesn't have the parts breakdown on the QR code, you can still go to our website, type in the part number, and then under it, it's gonna say parts breakdown next to additional information, and that will have the downloadable PDF so you can keep or look at to do whatever you gotta do. And I'm sure for guys that don't wanna go through all that trouble, they can go to your social media. Let's say they bought the VHC 77 kit. Like, I love that kit, right? And they got one bit broken. They can say, hey, I got I bought the VHC 77 and this bit is broken. And, I need this part and you number. guys will be able to figure it out. Uh, we'll 100%. It. <laughs> so, 100%. Not and that's course. the beauty of not being so corporate. Yeah. You know, we can, t- any avenue that we have to take care of you, we can. There you go. One of us or one other person will be the people answering you yeah, on the social sure. media. It's not someone that we hire that's, you know, 18 years old that we're paying next that's to nothing just say, to take, put the picture up. No, it's not that. It's not that. It's, not that. it's, building, it's right. knowledgeable people about the price. One of us and one other person that mm-hmm. run that. We all have access to it so that we can help each other answer questions so that it's someone knowledgeable answering those questions. I have been waiting to get to this set. Because... IRS 100. Interchangeable ratcheting screwdriver. 100. Now what this set is, is this guy right here, which I know you're going to say it looks similar, but it's a little different. This set right here, you have ratcheting, locking, and reversible. Sure. Right? You can hear it's pretty fine toothed. Uh-huh. Now you have a magnetic bit holder here. Yep. This guy pops out. That's the interchangeable part. But at its base here, you have a stubby. stubby. So you got a stubby magnetic bit insert. Uh-huh. And it also comes with these blades here, which are the most popular blades that you'd use, which is a number two Phillips, a T10, right? T15, I'm sorry, that's my mess up. A T15, I have a, 20. a T20, yeah. and then a T30. There you go. It has all those blades if you want something bigger. It also has this guy right here. This is what I like right here. This little guy. So if you guys don't know what this is, this thing is a magic box. Spring-loaded right? and magnetic. And what it, what is this? What it does is that it goes onto something that's non-magnetic. Oh. Something that's non-magnetic. Oh, that one already we used it on. Let's see what it's not. Them all, all of those are magnetic. They're all magnetic. <laughs> yeah. Give me one that here, let me the other one. Give me I don't one. think we have any non-magnetic screwdrivers here. All right, so yeah, but this thing is very strong and you can use it to magnetize any screwdriver, but you can also use it to demagnetize by just rubbing it around the outside. And it might take a little bit longer because again, you're, you're demagnetizing it. You know how magnets are, they're kind of stubborn, but it does demagnetize the actual screwdriver blade. Right. And this set also comes with 32 bits. You have Phillips, flats, metric standard hex, Torx, uh, you even have, what else have we got in here? Metric standard hex, Torx, then you have the square and the more torque. There you go. So is this piece going to be available for resale? So what that piece is actually going to be, and we're working on it now, we will have a bigger pack of just those bit holders and those mag- those screwdriver magnetizers. Okay. And they'll come in a display so that a truck can have it at the front of their truck so that a uh, tech can walk on the truck, see that, and pick it out like it's a piece of bubble gum. There and if they want them, they can buy them. Dealers can buy them a lot easier and and you just can see them. They can see them displayed there. So it's a lot easier than a big clamshell or something. Just boop, like chapstick off the grocery store. There you go. This is a cool set. I'm glad to see it. And since this one's so low, well, i if, yep. if you don't want to buy them. If you don't want everything because it's too much, you know that, you just want the magnetic bit holder, the stubby. This part number is IRSK. IRSK. Mm-hmm. Now on to the hard line. These are my two favorite new products that we've come out with. This This is your favorite. Personally. Um, So this is a Hex Master Set. This is a Torx Master (laughs) Set. This has sockets and drivers. You have regular length. You have four inch long drivers. You have six inch long drivers. You also have ball Torx in this six inch long uh, setup. But you have the three most popular sizes. So you have T20, 
25, and 30 in ball torques. And these are all e torques. Yeah. S2. Cool. So these are impact quality sockets. There you go. Not that they're impact rated because they are chrome finished, but these are all impact quality so sockets. So user drivers. discretion is on the user, right? Like it the can handle the impact, but it can handle it, but I don't know if you can. <laughs> no, yeah, well, that, the, the thing, perfect. that's the thing, chrome can flake. Mm -hmm. It's um, just the nature of the beast with that. Yeah, but it's not dangerous no. like the thin wall chrome no, 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 sockets, no, no. right? It's just for obvious liability reasons and for legal purposes, chrome does flake. There you go. <laughs> what about your regular socket thing? Because I've actually brought this up before and there's some right there. We have there. some here. They come in a master set. Just like this. Yeah. We talked about this on Joe's All Star Tools. If I want to match it just like this, I mean, these guys are freaking, these are some heavy sockets for what they are. They're, they're S2 steel, and these will hold up in your impact gun. I'll put them up to, I'll put them next to any high quality socket, any socket brand that you have. But you use it your own discretion. Use your own discretion. If you break them, I'll warrant it. It's going to crit. You know, crack exactly. and pop, and it's probably to hit you, but hey. If you're a real man, you'll use Chrome on your impacts, right? And stay yeah. tuned for a future video where we talk about the new version of those sockets. Oh, that's for that's for later, though. There we go. An analogy that I like is it's the same thing as like race teams in NASCAR or in F1. Everyone has to play by the same rules, mm -hmm. but it really depends on the team behind the car, tuning the engine, working on it, and and you know putting it on the racetrack. That's what makes each team or one team better than the other. A lot of companies make S2 steel. Um, there's a lot of processes that go into heating and treating S2. We have seen a less, less of uh, breakage on our stuff than most other companies that have S2. And so we stand by it and we know that this is some of the highest quality S2 steel that you'll find anywhere. Yeah. And for your Formula One buffs out there, money also has a lot to do with it but in this case that's not the case because there are a lot larger tool companies than us but they do it's not a, it's put as much attention detail okay. i know but that is money is a big factor <laughs> in that sport all right let's be you can't compare Haas to, to mercedes and red bull it's just sure. it's not yeah. but in this case you could definitely compare us regardless of money to the top of the top because we care that much about the product and developing the product so that i don't ever have to see it again in my own shop there you go so this is going to be the regular, the master hex. Hex, yep. yep. All metric hex, short from two all the way up to 22, including that two and a half. And then you also have the long, which goes from 10 all the way up, or three all the way up to 10. There you go. Yeah, I mean, and you can tell just by looking at something. And they're heavy, man. I mean, you can't feel weight through a video, but they're heavy. Does it, They have a great finish, and they, they look fantastic, and they are in quality and in finish. So we got some new extension sets yep. with something a little different in these. Yeah, so all of these are two-step wobble. Mm -hmm. You have a 10, in this one, which is the 3 8 master set, you have 10, 6, 3 inch, 2 inch. You have a spring-loaded dual drive. Vim Agra. Yeah, you got that Vim Agra, <laughs> you got that Vim Agra in here. So uh, on that, you boys. On the Firm Flex adapter. You have a dual swivel adapter That's which is spring loaded. spring loaded on the end over here and this is also locking and you also have a locking you know regular square drive right. with this collar the locking collar there so that's the three eighths and then we have the same thing in the quarter mm -hmm. it's all the same pieces you have the quarter inch dual it's flex quarter drive. um you have the firm flex vim agra and i don't know if you mentioned that but that wobble plus two set wobble is something that we include and sure. all these standard. So your 3H drive, here's your part number, guys. What does it stand for? Master Extension Kit. 600 for 3H, Master Extension Kit, 400 for quarter. Now, we also have a regular extension set, which is just four pieces each, yep. which includes the same standard here, these guys, one, two, three, four, with the Wobble Plus or two-step wobble, mm -hmm. none of the three extra ones. Okay. And that is WEX 400 and WEX 600. There so you if go. you don't want the extra bells and whistles, you don't have to. So... What's up with the ratchets? I heard y'all have made some improvements in the ratchets well, just from comments you read. Is that right? That's exactly. Right. People were saying they they 
had a little bit of you know a little bit of play and they were a little uh a little loud so we fixed it mm -hmm. can y'all hear that let me see if i can get real close and that's a smooth quarter inch ratchet like you've heard turn it 90 tooth rated for 200 percent of ANSI. 200 percent of ANSI, just like the rest of our hard all right so i watched the video that you did where you put those through some pretty rough paces yeah let's talk about that for just a second because that was an impressive video okay and if you hadn't seen it tell them where they can go watch that video you can see it on instagram at vim tools uh, or on TikTok, Advent Tools. We come up with a lot of fun content for you guys. So it's it's not just nonsense. It's you know why? Useful, it's because y'all are not 70. That's also it. That, that's <laughs> so, correct. You know. So this quarter inch ratchet, we took this up to 99 foot pounds before it broke. I put the head kit in it. Um, so I repaired it and then I retested it. It went back to 99. So this is a very strong quarter inch ratchet. Our half inch our half inch is rated for over 700 foot pounds. And this retails for what, Luke? It would retail for, I want to say $90? I think it's less than that. 80 something? Uh, I don't but for that price, head, in this length of a ratchet, on a half inch ratchet, to get Life that strength, works. you're usually paying a lot more. And here's the deal, we actually went to go test, because I know that's the next question, you mm -hmm. test them. We went to go test, and we used the 3.8, we didn't even get to the half inch, and we didn't have the torque meter to test it, so we had to use an adapter, of course. And we're sitting there, and homeboy over here was trying to slam it down, bouncing on it. We broke the freaking adapter. Yep. We broke the adapter side. broke at 240 foot pounds on the 3 8s. Do you remember how I tested that ratchet? Do you remember the story? So that? Mr. Clay here called me, and he goes, man, you'll never believe this. I said, what? You remember that, that ratchet you sent me? Uh, the half inch ratchet you sent me the other day? I said, yeah. He goes, well, I'm driving with my trailer, you know, my old trailer down the road, and I blew a tire. The only thing I had in the car was a half inch ratchet. And I said, shit, I'm going to break this brand new. It was new. brand new, still yep. in the box, still in the plastic where he sent it to me. I've had it in there for about a week and a half. It's in the back seat of my truck. So I didn't have a four way. Exactly. But I had some, like a cheap chrome set. It was like Duralast socket. It was just like throwaway tools, right? And that is the only long ratchet I had because my normal half inch ratchet was the Duralast that was in there. So it's like a six inch ratchet, right? I'm like, hello, brother. Today's your day. Today's the day you so go around. I held the rail. I, I tried it by hand first and it wouldn't move because those those have been on there. Rusted, you know, that super low rust. Years, <laughs> you know. And uh so I put those this ratchet on there and I stood on it and I said, This is it, we'll find out what it's made out of. And it took all the lug nuts off, changed the tire, no big deal. And I called him, I'm like, Okay. It, real it impressed me. Because, I mean, I jumped up and down on it. it, 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 it yeah, so. they're incredibly strong. As with our three-quarter inch. So, if you haven't seen this before, this is a three-quarter inch extendable ratchet with a few little features. How but, long is that extended all the way? This is 46 inches? 46, yeah, 48. 48 inches okay. once it's extended. Um, but this has a couple features. So... You can pop this head off, pop the ratchet head off, which is rated for over 1,500 foot-pounds, this okay. ratchet head. When we tested this, there's also a video of me testing this on our Instagram. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah. I took it over 1,000 foot-pounds. I couldn't get any more. I mean, I was bouncing up and down on it. But we tested this once ourselves on a semi-truck uh, that we have a friend that has a semi. He pulled up here. We had a his long. Name Kenny. Kenny's a cool guy. His name's Kenny. <laughs> we, we had a long tube that we put on the end of this. A that cheater tube. pipe. It's not a tube. It's called nope. a cheater pipe. This thing was like twelve feet. No, long. it was it was a tube. That this was thing. A tube. This was no, like twelve. That's feet called long. a big cheater pipe. No, it was called galvanized pipe <laughs> from a house that needed to get fixed. Yeah. <laughs> so we put it on there, and I mean, we jumped up and down. We pulled as hard as we could on it. We haven't broken this thing yet, and we haven't mm -hmm. bent the shaft either. Um, so these have held up extremely well, but. You take this ratchet head off, you have a breaker bar head within yeah. seconds that you can attach to it. So now you have a ratchet and breaker bar. Indexing breaker bar. Indexing breaker bar in one. Mm -hmm. Lifetime warranty. And something that's cool about this, or something that's nice, it doesn't have a collar. Okay, there's a Man. few others out there that have the collar. We pull it down and slide it up, mm -hmm. um, which causes some problems. The main issue you know, is when that collar turns inside, it gets locked up, and then right. that's when and it, seizes, it seizes, and you up. can't ex you can't extend it anymore. This 
has it's a round inner shaft it's a, with a round outer shaft as well it just has a flat neck on the front okay keeps it from turning. Mm -hmm. and it has this piece in here that just keeps it from spinning around right. and it also keeps it from seizing and if for some reason it ever does all you have to do is loosen these two little screws loosen the inner shaft back up tighten it back down and you're good to go mm -hmm. so we've seen not many problems with it. We've sold a lot of them. And how many we have we received? I mean, we back? went to uh, a flagship tool show, and they have their own, of course. And we still managed to sell 230 of our branded. There you go. Yeah. So just goes to show you, they are great. So that brings me to this. This is the TWE 26, and uh, you've probably seen our, seen our wrench extender before. Do you have one here? Can you find one? I'll get one. You've probably seen our wrench extender before. A this w guy. 15. A w, it's a the 15 wrench inch extender. Wrench extender. 15. Bad. This has been very popular. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Way more popular than I ever had. Everybody needs more leverage. Mm -hmm. Who couldn't use an extra 15 inches? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, here's an extra. That's not a lot to do with it. You can't even wear pants. <laughs> here's an extra. Here's an extra 26. Well, somebody's mind was going to gutter, didn't they? <laughs> so look, this is an extendable wrench extender. Okay. okay, same concept as the three quarter inch ratchet and breaker bar kit, except this has a wrench extender head, which, this is a spoiler alert, is something that we are developing for this guy right here. And why are we developing something so big that's going to be such it's a warranty so maker for those wrenches? So you won't have to use a pipe. Well, also, Clay, I don't know if you know this, we don't make wrenches that big. So not we're not wrenches. worried about the wrenches breaking it. That sounds like someone else's problem. <laughs> okay, so look. Now look, look. Um, you take this piece at the bottom. Oh, like a spy tool. There you got you this go. little pin. Mm -hmm. So you can push that. And now we have, can you get the other attachments? Yep. You now we have- call that the ejection pin. The eject, you take the ejection oh. pin out. There you go. You have those though, cousin. And now we have a spring-loaded crow foot wrench attachment, right? Right. This right here is called the alignment enforcer. That's a fancy name. <laughs> and that, that part number you told the part number? This is SCF25A, spring loaded crow go. foot. There you go, the quarter twenty five yep. adapter. I hope other tool companies watch this video and they figure out that guy, how to do part numbers. That guy right there is actually sold individually. It's not part of any kit that we offer with this uh -huh. handle here. Now we do offer two separate kits with this handle. The first one was that TWE 26 that you just saw. Mm -hmm. That SCF 25A is sold separately. And then we have another kit that is the TRK 100 with comes. So before you guys get your hopes up thinking you're just gonna buy this, you're gonna, I mean, obviously you probably put a piece of rebar in there and make it work or whatever you got, but you need to buy. So now hand. we have- Or the, you buy one of the sets. The TRK right. 100 is the set and that is the ratchet and breaker bar kit. So you get the handle, you get the flex head. Half inch. Mm -hmm. Half inch ratchet attachment, as well as the breaker bar attachment. So you have a ratchet, you have a breaker bar, you have a- And how long is that one? Extended? This is 26 inches okay. extended. Well, the handle by itself is 21. The attachments range from three and a half to six inches. Okay. Yeah. So you have a wrench extender, a uh, flex head ratchet, a breaker bar, and a spring-loaded crow foot wrench. And this opens up the door for us to come out with a lot of other attachments. So sure. we're gonna have things to add on to this. So it's gonna be just like a continuing line. There you go, and now- One if, handle exactly. will go in a drawer with multiple head attachments. We're actually gonna add a, it's gonna be a big steel ball that goes on it for all your tool dealers. When you got techs that owe you money, and all you techs, when you got tool dealers, you owe money too. It'll just be a battle with the VIN. I think the tool dealers would get beat with that more when they can't get their warranty stuff. Out. There you go. See, it's it's multi-use. We're going to call it the multi-use ball. Does that multi-use ball come with a lifetime warranty? It does. It does. Really? For the lifetime of whoever got beat with it. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a driver head on the end of this. Yeah. And uh, see if that fixes the slice. Your swing <laughs> speed will be like 12. <laughs> 12 <laughs> but if you, if you dead center it, that ball is going. Yeah, so, but you swing a couple times with that and then pull out your regular driver. 
This is not the BCT1. It is not. You've seen the BCT1, which is a button clip tool. Hey, that's how I remember that part number. Button clip tool. That's it. That's easy. And now the BCT1 is a similar mechanism down here. This is the same mm -hmm. for the BCT1. Now the jaws are different. Okay. They look the same, but right here you'll see that these are pointed jaws mm -hmm. as opposed to the curved. Now the yeah. curved is for those button clips so you don't actually damage the clip sure. while you're trying to remove it. You can put force on it without damaging it because if you were going to use something like this, you could just use a pick and it's the same sure. concept. Now, this guy is actually for body panels. So this is for those push pins. You can get under them because it's thin enough, and then you can pry, pull them up, pull them up, yeah. pull them up. And you just have this in your pocket, bop, 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 you're done. So it's for those tight pocket. places where you can't get the pliers in there. Exactly, and it's just more convenient. This is, you know, this is smaller. You put it in your pocket, you bop, 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 and you're done. There's no going back and forth in the toolbox. Mm -hmm. If it's something you deal with all day. So we was talking off camera, the guy's screwdriver set here. And they're the only tool company I know that actually puts multiple Phillips heads and only one pry bar in the set. And not only did they put a pry bar in here, the pry bar chisel scraper combo driver here actually has a striking cap. Because you were going to do it anyway. Let's make it at least easier for you to do it without breaking it, you know? Yeah. Well, I don't know why more people don't. It makes it easier not only on them, but on the company selling Well, a lot of a well. lot of... A lot of Still and if you guys say that you sizes. haven't used this as a pry bar, scraper, chisel combo, you pack, are a GD liar. You <laughs> are full of crap. Exactly. Yeah. But something cool about these, these grips, if you haven't used them before, so they're like this malleable, yeah, squishy nice. texture. They're okay. Gecko grips. These are the gecko grips. This is a, mm -hmm. this is a new name we've given them, Why? and they're going to have that branding on them going forward. But so how they work, as you apply pressure on these they'll actually twist and conform to the shape of your hand. So you get more grip, the more p torque you apply to this handle. Yeah. Um, Instead of slipping, it, it yeah, actually it grabs onto your hand more. It's exponential. Yeah. It so works when very you're well. prying on stuff, it's more comfortable. Exactly, that more comfortable. very comfortable. And I mean, if you use a screwdriver all day, you know that the handles actually do make a difference for the the if you use of the a screwdriver all day, you need to get a quarter inch bit driver. Because <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. And anybody who's concerned about it, we've tested these in gasoline and brake cleaner. We've tested them in diesel Sol fuel. They're, they're uh, they impervious to solvents. They don't, make sure of that. they don't get all gooey. They don't swell up. No, and no have you're not going to have to with all that. Old no. lady looking skin and on And that, that was the biggest concern with us when yeah. we were like, well, how does it hold up the solvents? We tested it and they, they really do hold up. Mm hmm. Well, I did want to talk about one thing because I did get a sneak peek um, something, and it's it's not really a tool, but it's something that I like the thought of. And you may not even want to show it if you do. We're not like the video won't show it. I'm sorry, guys, but you got something special in that jar over there. Can we show that? Like I know it's not ready yet, and oh, in the this, jar. This is cool. All right. This is a cool product. So, you got our tool car here, right? Let's just use the back to make this easier. You gotta show the jar too, because everybody might not. So this guy familiar. right here, this is our MR jar, right? Seen them before. You have a five pound magnet on this jar. Okay. Pretty thick plastic. You hold bits, fasteners, little things, anything in this jar here. Mm -hmm. And they stick magnetically, right? Pretty strong magnet. Yeah. I mean. Like, I've seen one in this building. I'm not going to say whose desk it was at, but it was full of baby Hershey bars. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it makes sense. I could guess. So you could hide your stash from your coworkers. Guys. Exactly. Just there you go. Your toolbox. Believe it or not, there are some dealers and some mechanics that be like, well, I ain't using it. I'm using it for a stash, but it ain't going to be candy. You know oh. what I'm saying? And yeah, that's, that's Apparently cool. it's we are a green company so if that's what you want then go for it <laughs> anywho inside the jar is where that magic is okay this is cool guys everybody loves microfiber microfibers everyone needs a microfiber right we got where is it? vim microfibers here pretty neat right pretty cool oh you guys came up with a microfiber how you how original yeah the thing about these microfibers they're magnetic microfibers. They got a mm. magnet up in here, so you can keep that on your toolbox all day without having to use a hook or anything like that. Sticks on, no problem. You're not worried about it falling. Yeah. And then when you need to wash it, because I know, well, how are you gonna wash it with a magnet? On wash the back this. of this, you flip this over, this magnet will come right out, throw it in the wash. There's no abrasives here to worry. There's no, oh, there's no, uh, the, what are they called? The eyelets? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No eyelets, so you're not gonna scratch a car. Everything on here is soft. 
It's made for automotive use. Throw it in the wash, take it back out. And I know you guys are like, what is so special about that? Like, I love to keep a vehicle clean. You know that. Oh, exactly. So when you wash your car and you've always got to wipe off the armor all off the tires and this and that. So when you get ready to clean it, that, that bad boy can just pop right on the garage door yeah. slide or like your shop wall, let it dry out and you're ready to go. Yeah, and But I clean my toolbox like religiously, right? Uh -huh. And I mean, I've you paid got, enough for it. Shit. I've always <laughs> got a bunch of, you know, like uh, I try to keep those microfibers handy and they fall off on the floor and they get crap on them. Then you got to wash them before you can use them again. <laughs> like the beauty of that is you stick it on the back of your toolbox you get grease on it, wipe it off, stick it back on the back. You could even stick it on the body of the vehicle unless you got yeah. one of them eco boots or aluminum body. Mm -hmm. This guy. Yeah, I need a 5 0 Mustang. Okay, you know what we should do? Race, because I'll drag your ass in the tundra. Race him in the Dr. Gadget mobile out there. There you go. I'll still drag you. V8 or, uh, or Eco Boost? Um, Hold on. Yeah. Like for durability, okay, okay, right, longevity, yeah. definitely. What about three, for, five, for three, being three, a man? This, this is me. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> if you race him on the razor, though, I'm putting money on the razor. That razor yeah, is unreal. Maybe in, like, yeah. maybe in a very short That distance. razor is unreal. Yeah, it is. Look, well, so, next thing you know, he's going to get a lightning. I, oh. I would consider it lightning. It's <laughs> way too expensive. It's crazy. And I don't know about the like, what charging ports are around here. The Wawa? That Wawa, I'm not sitting in that parking lot for more than 10 minutes. Me and Clay went to that Wawa. There's a lot. Yeah. Of, yeah. It's a lot of talent in that Wawa. Let's just say that. Right next to the casino. Hey, guys, I'm going to tell you something that's cool about Tampa, too. We went to a restaurant last night, and there's a lot of people with face tattoos down here. <laughs> I was, I was kind of shocked. <laughs> Face and then Damn this guy baby. goes, oh yeah, by the way, just right over here is like, uh, it's, it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rough area, but just, you know. That he said, works. I normally don't go this place, but since you're here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and let's, it, let's not act like it's a coincidence that the bar we were at is Clay's favorite place on earth. It is. Yeah. yeah. Uncle Fat's Tavern. It's we even saw Uncle Fat. We saw there. Uncle Fat himself. He was there last night. Uncle Fat was there last night. So if you guys are ever in Tampa and you want the coldest ultra you can drink and really really good hot wings i give it five stars hands down it is some of the best fast so. is good it's a it's it's the, the i love it as a dive bar it is the perfect you go there you're relaxed you're not worried about it you're not worried about your wallet you're not worried about nothing you're just drinking yeah. they even got karaoke there you go it was everybody was singing last night Mike sang Barbie Girl. It was fantastic <laughs> it is. <laughs> all right guys be sure to check out them tools on youtube instagram Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Twitter, whatever, whatever. So if it's a media, they own it, right? There you go. According to Dr. Gadget. So you guys check their channel out. They always got some cool videos. And if you haven't seen the Razor video where they tested the mag rails, yeah, you missed a good one because that one was awesome. But thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you guys for doing a video and showing us all of the new stuff. Now we have the world record for the longest video on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe. Yeah. Well, Probably the best video. Right? Maybe. So well, thank you guys for tuning in. Check out all our socials. What's up, mechanics? Yes. That's stay it. up to date. You gotta say it one more time before we go. What? What's up, mechanics? Do it. What's up, mechanics? I drive people. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, like always hit that thumbs up. Check over for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes down there if you're not subscribed. Dude, don't suck anymore. Push that button. Y'all have a great week. See ya.